want to thank you all again for your amazing testimony. Um, we'll now proceed to the question and answer session with the members of the committee. I'll, I'll start, uh, Ms. Ms. Dror, we've seen the news reports, we've seen social media videos, but you've lived the, the nightmare on Cornell's campus um, over these past few weeks. You even had to endure a faculty member at your university calling the murder of well over a thousand people in Israel, quote, exhilarating. What has the university done to protect you and other Jewish students in the face of the threats made? And has the university's response been as swift and sincere as you've seen with other issues? Absolutely. First of all, thank you so much for your question. Um, directly after the death threats were made, I'd say in the span of two hours, one of the strongest statements I've seen was immediately released condemning anti-Semitism, condemning violence against religious minorities. It was a very strong statement. Um, and Jewish students on campus were very grateful to the administration to receive that unconditional support. Uh, since then, I'm also aware of heightened security in all Jewish facilities on campus. That includes the kosher dining hall, the Hillel offices, the Center for Jewish Living, the Chabad House, and we are very appreciative of that as well. Uh, we've received direct support from the university in attending Shabbat dinners. Uh, Governor Kathy Hochul attended the uh, kosher dining hall the morning after the threats were made. And all of that support has gone sincerely appreciated by the Jewish community. My question is, why didn't we receive it right after the October 7th attacks? Why did it take a direct threat to murder, rape, and slaughter Jews on campus to get support from our administration. It should have come way earlier. It was an oversight on behalf of the university administration. We sincerely appreciate all of their help now, but it's too little too late. That said, um, a lot of the other people on this panel have spoken about Students Justice for Palestine. Cornell has a chapter as well. Um, they have formed a coalition along with other student groups on our campus who have made demands to the university, including demands to divest from all Israel-related uh, expenditures on campus. However, one of their demands were particularly interesting. It was to reduce all police presence on campus. Two weeks after the Jewish community received death threats, they wanted to reduce all police presence on campus. That's what they asked from the university. So uh, I absolutely second the statements of everyone made on this panel and appreciate it. Thank you. Dr. Dr. Schanzer, we know the hateful attacks we're seeing on Jewish students at, at college campuses is not occurring in a vacuum. Can you help us take a step back and explain the financing including the role of 501c3s and 501c4s here in the US that generate resources that are used in some cases to support outright terrorist groups like Hamas from within the US. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the cases that I discussed in my testimony, both spoken and written, uh, address three charities that have been exploited by Hamas here in this country. Uh, it was quite an effort to track them down back in the 2000s. My concern right now is that America's focus has shifted over the last decade or so. Uh, first it was ISIS, then it was Russia, then it was China. My concern right now is that we've taken our eye off the ball. I am not aware of significant efforts within the U.S. government to track Hamas over the last 10 years. Yes, over the last month, we have seen a significant uptick, and justifiably so. My fear, though, is that we've had 10 years of just uh, a blind spot as it relates to Hamas, perhaps other groups as well. As you know, the US government has pivoted away from what used to be known as the global war on terror, as we've now shifted into what we now describe as great power competition. 
It's my belief, my strong belief, that we need to learn how to walk and chew gum here. We're going to continue to see terrorist attacks against the United States and our allies. Unfortunately, I think this is just a reality. We need to make sure that we have the resources within the bureaucracy to tackle these problems while addressing the threats of Russia and China and others. Ms. Tishby, as you know, the disgusting show of support for the terrorist goals of Hamas are appearing on college campuses, including the phrase from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, being displayed on a building at the University of Pennsylvania. As someone who has been an advocate for Israel, focused on expanding other people's knowledge of your country, can you speak to how these displays of support for Hamas go beyond just some harmless college campus activism? Absolutely, Mr. Chairman, thank you so much for the question. So we can definitely see how when you support a massacre that occurred in Israel, you will encourage violence in the United States. That's kind of, that goes without saying, and it's a dog whistle to their supporters. We have seen the attacks on college students and beyond. There was a kid in Tulane University that was hospitalized with, a broken, with broken bones for supporting Israel, being in a, in a rally, in a pro-Israel rally. Um, there was, uh, Paul Kessler from Los Angeles was killed for holding an Israeli flag. So there is incitement for violence that is immediately preceded by violence. And we see this in the uptake in anti-Semitic attacks and rhetoric. We see this online and offline. There is no question that these two, two things are directly related and connected.